Now, so the big question here is, I've got this system AX equals B. I can think of this as really, this is a linear system. Right? I can go back and write this as the linear system that we saw at the very start of this, the class. And we are given A and given B. And the next question is, is does the X exist? Okay, so can we figure out what this F X is uh, and even ask, does it even does the question make sense? Is can we solve this? Uh, another thing we can ask is, is what are all the possible solutions we could get out of this? And the other solution thing we can ask is, um, what restriction is there on B? If you're given A, do, is there necessarily going to be a solution? And if not, what do you have to do to change B to make that so? So let's go back and look at what this means. So what do we have? We have uh, a times x, and I can think of this in terms of the columns of A times x, and by definition this is going to be x1 v1 plus x2 v2 plus x3 v3, and you go blah 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 until you get down to the end. And we want to know, is that equal to B? And we're assuming that uh, all these X's are real numbers and they're scalars. Notice everywhere here is just nothing but the columns of X. So this is basically saying that this B has to be in the span of these vectors. v1, v2, v3 to vn. Okay, So this is basically, uh, we can think of this in terms of these vectors v's. This is a linear combination of the v's vectors. Okay, So this basically says that in order for there to be a solution, We have to take B and we have to be able to write it as a linear combination of these vectors V1, V2, V3 to Vn. Okay. And so now if we stop and think about this, going back to the language from the previous section, if we look at the span of those things, that B vector must be in one of those possible linear combinations, right? This span is all possible linear combination of these things, and one of the vectors in this set has to be B. Okay. So again, it's really vital to think about this matrix A in terms of its columns, and keep in mind that AX Oops, sorry, I switched it on myself. Right? I'm calling these now A's. Is some linear combination of the columns of A. And we're really talking about what's happening with the span of the columns of this matrix so you'll hear me talk about the span of the columns of the matrix. And this is going to tell us whether or not we're going to have a solution, because when I take AX equals B, this thing right here, this A times X, is going to be some linear combination of the columns. So this AX is going to be a member of this set of uh, vectors that are the linear combinations of these columns. And B has to be one of those in order for there to be a solution. Okay, so what do we have? In order there, for there to be a solution, 
a times x is really just a linear combination of the columns of a. I want to set that equal to b, which means that b is a linear combination of the columns of a. Right? If that's true, then we can figure out what the x1s, x2, xn's could possibly be. Right? And all this is just another way of saying b is in the span of the columns of a. So it's important to recognize These are basically equivalent statements. To say this is the same thing as saying this is the same thing as saying this. And I can go backwards, start from here, and say these imply all these other things. Right? So these are basically different ways to say the same thing. All right. Now the next question is, suppose the only thing I know is the matrix A, and I don't know B in advance and b is going to be a vector to be named later. Can I figure out if this is going to be true? Can I find the x? Right? Again, keep in mind, my goal here is to find the x, figure out what it is. Can you figure out what this x is given anything later? So you give me anything in here. Can you then figure out what x is? So what does that mean? So i got to be careful. Um, this. We're going to go back to this idea that a times x is going to be x1 times the first column of a plus x2 times the second column of a plus x3 times the third column of a. And you keep this up until you get to the last column, and that's going to be b. This thing on the left, right, this expression right there is a linear combination of the columns of a. In order for this to always work, basically then all possible linear combinations have to be all possible vectors that I could put in here. And this is all possible vectors that I could put in for B is Rm. So all the vectors with M rows. Okay. So if the span of the columns of A is all of Rm, and I can put any vector in there, and at least one solution or infinite solutions could be available to me. Now, remember, I said earlier I can think about this in terms of the augmented matrix, right? So I can think of this in this form. I've got my right-hand side. I would like to be able to say I can put anything in for that uh, right-hand side. If I put this thing in echelon form, then this is basically saying that I'm not going to have a row of all zeros and non-zero there. So it's basically saying that when I put this thing in echelon form, that every row is going to have a non-zero pivot. Okay, so I can pick any row here and I'm going to have a pivot that, uh, sorry, I'm going to have a pivot that is um, basically in every row and it's not possible for me to get a row of all zeros here and non-zero there. Okay. So basically it means I can find pivots for everything in every row. Okay, that's it. Thank you.